if you look at your career, are you able to step back now and go, I am proud of everything I've done. Yeah. I'm proud that I did all this. And when you say not no, having no expectations, do you go into things thinking, I, I'm not thinking about how successful it is. I'm thinking about, I want to, I want to do this. I okay. want to tell a story. As long as I could justify um, its existence and cost, then I'll feel okay. Because it's a weird job where you ask people for money so you can tell a, a made up story. So I, you know, I learned early on, I was raised Catholic, so I carry a fucking huge cross. Um, and when it comes to like borrowing money to make a movie, that cross like don't go away. I've never reached a point where I'm like, well, that's just how we do it in this business. It's fucking millions of dollars. Like that's what's nuts, man. It's like two things I always say, like after I've, I've accomplished a thing, good or bad, whether it's been successful rather or unsuccessful, but these words are, tend to be more effective when something's been unsuccessful. First thing I say is, oh, you wanted this. Like you wanted this so bad that you willed this into existence. You convinced people to spend millions of dollars to tell your story. You can't back off it now just because people didn't receive it the way you want. That wasn't part of the deal. You wanted to make the fucking thing. Wow. You wanted this, stand by it. And then the other thing I always say That's is- That's awesome. What was the alternative? Like if I didn't do it, what was the alternative? I'm a person who knows how to do the thing, has done the thing professionally many times and whatnot, and knows exactly how to get it accomplished. And if I don't do it, it lives in me Emptiness. like some form of cancer. Yeah. Really. Like it just eats at you knowing like, oh my God, I could have and I didn't and whatnot. Wasted opportunity. That's where regret is. Some people have asked me, you regret any of the movies you made? No, I regret not the movies I made, but the movies I was too scared to make or the movies that I didn't what do. What movie were you too scared to make? That you can say. For a while, like uh, Red State, man. Red State, uh, which was a flick I made years ago, and then I took up to Sundance, and then uh, we distributed it. Like, I, I was like, I'm going to take this movie out on tour. And it kind of created the model by which, like, I've lived since then. Um, make a flick and then take it out on the road and play it like a theatrical performance, you know, to, like, 1,500, 2,000 seaters. And that becomes, like, a concert. It's less a movie and more like a concert experience. So I have like ways to kind of like, you know, make sure that like whatever's being put out is gonna come back because tough to live with like, oh my God, I borrowed, I got them to give me $3 million and fucking like, it just, and it was yoga hosers, fuck. Like, you know, that I carry that shit like herpes and whatnot. Um, nobody remembers the failure of a, a, a movie, a book, uh, anything like the creator of that material. It doesn't matter what happens to it over time. Case in point, Marats came out in 1995, died a horrible fucking death. Cost $5 million to make, made $2 million at the box office. Every critic shit in its mouth and whatnot. It was the joke movie of mine. It was my second movie. It, it solidified the a idea. A lot of people like that movie. Of a sophomore slump. Ten years after that movie died fucking because people had seen it on cable and fucking vhs and dvd like people didn't see the movie or have the same experience with the movie i did people would be like come up to me and say oh i love mall rats and my go-to joke is always like great where were you when it happened we could have used your help <laughs> and like what do you mean and i was like well that movie flopped when it came out and like no that can't be true i own it on dvd and i'm like well those two things don't necessarily equate to the same thing yeah and then you realize Nobody remembers except the filmmaker. I'm the only one that remembers like we made 2.1 million. That's not what people remember. What people remember is like, oh, I watched it with my boys when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I watched it on my first date uh, with the woman who I eventually married. Shit like that. That makes you feel good. Oh, that makes me feel good. So to answer the question you put forward first, yeah, I look back at the career of Kevin Smith and and like I don't always talk about him as in the royal or whatever the fuck, but to to talk about the career of, of the the guy that i play from time to time well i mean it's legendary what you did no one was doing that well you you're you, very kind i mean they slacker gave you the idea yes. you watched richard Linkletter's slacker yeah, yeah and yeah. you were like can't see it it can't be it unless you see it and i saw it yeah richard Linkletter doing a thing that seemed like i could get close to that and that was it that yeah. that the idea happened and you did what I always wonder. I mean, Here, but I will say this. Legendary is very kind, but I don't think it's legendary for the same reason that you think it's legendary. I think what's going to be legendary for me about my career is no one is ever going to bother to try to duplicate it. Like nobody's ever going to be like, well, I'm going to do what Kevin Smith did. I'm going to take out all my money. 
No, it's not, not that. Even that. It's just the career spans 30 years and starts with like this Cinderella story of a movie, like a punk rock movie that just captured uh, imaginations at the right time, said the right thing at the right time. If I made it a year before, a year later, nothing fucking happens. And then going like, oh, I'm going to write comic books. Oh, I'm going to start doing podcasting. Oh, I'm going to fucking talk to the audience engage with the audience early on these are all things that like i was doing when everyone else was going like why would you waste time on the internet and stuff like that so always finding a different way to engage with the audience beyond the obvious and beyond how we started the conversation i.e me being a filmmaker because as a filmmaker i get judged against other filmmakers if i'm a director they go like well you're no martin scorsese but i became kevin smith professionally at that point who are they going to hold me against like well you're no you are him. You know what I'm saying? So some people That's are like, awesome. the artist should disappear and the work should speak for itself. And I agree with that on some levels, but I also feel you get to a place as an artist, if you're lucky enough, like where I've had three decades of this fucking shit, where you could just start playing variations now. Like the thing you came to accomplish, you did. So you're like, all right, well, let me just see if I can try this now, if I could try this. And somewhere along the way, it became less important for me to be identified as one thing, director Kevin Smith, which, oh my God, I wanted that more than anything else when I was a kid. But suddenly it became more important to be identified as like, oh, that that's that Kevin Smith. Like he does these things. 